Hi, and welcome to Cooking with Graham. So today we're gonna make just a simple sponge cake, because I've always been told that if you can't even make a sponge cake, then, well, there's not much hope for the rest of your baking. Um, so I'm gonna be using a, a tried and tested method that has never failed me and always makes really nice sponge. So to start with, I'm going to take two eight inch cake tins. Now the ones that I've got, I've got those and they're removable bit. Okay. So you're going to want to butter those in a minute. But first of all, we'll get on making the batter. So for this, I'm going to use, because I'm going to use two cakes and put them together, I'm going to use the weight of six eggs to make sure that your scales are at zero before you start adding the eggs. Okay. So that has now come to 316 grams. So that means for the flour, the self raising flour and the caster sugar and the uh, margarine, I'm gonna have to put the same amounts of those in. So zero your scales. Caster sugar, so in it goes. Until you've got the same amount as your eggs. Okay, in with the self raising. It always takes longer than I think this bit. Okay, lovely. There we go. Now for the margarine. Save the little thing that comes on top of it because it's really good for greasing your tins with. And again, this is always kind of more than you think. There we go, bam. Okay. Now comes the hard bit, mixing it all together. Normally, I would use some kind of like food mixer type of thing. But for today, I'm gonna to do it by hand. We'll see how it goes. Oh, first things first vanilla extract. You want around about a teaspoon, well two teaspoons because I've doubled the recipe. Now I'm using one that's called um, a Madagascan vanilla extract and it is really 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 vanilla-y. So I mean depending on your taste really I suppose but I really really like it. I'm saying really 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 a lot. All right so in that goes as well. Okay, now let's see how that mixes together. So you want to keep mixing this until it's completely all mixed in together and it makes a nice, I wouldn't go as far as saying firm batter, but one that takes a little bit of time to drip off. You don't want it too runny, but also you don't want it too thick either. So what I did, I got my margarine out uh, before making it, so it's had a chance to go a little bit soft. And that makes it a little bit easier then to start mixing it all together. Because otherwise if it's really, really, really hard, then you spend all your time just trousers falling down. Uh, you spend all your time trying to get through that. Now, I always like to think that doing it by app, it's like a, it's like a workout. So, you can enjoy the cake one. You want to make sure that it's all really, really, really well mixed in, and you can really easily miss the bits at the bottom. You don't want bits at the bottom that are then gonna not combine with everything and ruin the cake mix. Okay, so it's starting to come together. If I was using the food processor thing, then I'd put it on about mid to full power for literally only about a minute. And it gets loads of nice air into it. But, like I said, doing it by hand. 
Now I always think what because I'm going to put this together a bit like a like a Victoria sandwich. Going to make two 8-inch cakes and then stack them on top. Now whatever you put in the middle of it, I mean you know it's up to you. But so I'm going to go traditional today and just use uh, some jam that I've bought. Um, I can't be bothered to make my own jam really. Um, and then some buttercream. To make all these are cooking. So at this stage, I get your cooker on because you need it preheated at around about 180 degrees C. And this is where you pull all the funny faces trying to be really strong to get it all mixed in nicely. So you see, it holds its shape and it takes a little bit of time to drip off. Put it aside for a minute. Now, I always use butter to line my tins with. Um, one thing, because I like the taste. And two, it just helps, helps it come apart later on. So, what I do, put a chunk off. And you can use this to hold it if you want, but I like to get a bit messy. And rub it all over it. I mean, they say that they're non-stick, but I think that's a lie, really. You really, really nicely well grease it, and you're not going to have any worries of it not coming out of the pan. I've seen people use flour, like coat it with flour, but in all honesty, I've never tried it because I don't really believe that it works. Um, but if anybody out there has used it, let me know. Go on to my channel, leave a comment, let me know. All right, lovely. One done, put it together. What I really like about just normal sponge cake is it's so versatile. You can use it for anything, make it look posh, make it just because you want to make something. And it's one of those that you can make really quite easily and quick. So they're ready to go. So what you need to work out was that combined weight and then divide it by two. So you put margarine in it, so that's one lot of ingredients, caster sugar in it, another lot of ingredients, flour and eggs. So four times whatever the first ingredient was. Okay, so pop it into the cake tin. Have a look, see how much is going in. You want them to be roughly the same, otherwise, next one. But like I said, you know, your maths doesn't need to be perfect. It's rough, it's ready, but it'll make a bad cake. And this is where I've got this really cool spoon thing. Well, know, what is a spatula type like thing? It's really good because it gets in all the nooks and crannies so you can get every last little drop. Okay, so I've put a little bit too much in that one. So I'm just going to scoop a bit out. Okay. But if you just want to have a check, and they're roughly the same. So just gently even it out. Now, my cakes always tend to rise in the middle a bit much for my liking. So what I keep trying to do, I don't seem to be doing it very well though, unfortunately, is taking a bit of the mixture out of the middle and trying to push it around the sides instead. Again, if anybody's got any hints, tips, tricks for trying to make it a bit more even, please do let me know. Put some comments on this video, please. I do the same for the other one. And there we go, the oven's now up to temperature, so we haven't wasted any time or energy keeping that oven heated when we don't need to. Probably have my tongue out for half of this. Okay, in the oven they go, 180 degrees. 
for around about 40 minutes. Okay, so in a moment, I'll clean up and then we'll make the butter icing. Okay, so now we're gonna start making the, the butter icing. Now, what I always find, well, when I've tried to do butter icing in the past, it's something that's so, so simple, but if you don't get your butter a little bit um, gooey, so to say, um, it, it's just ridiculously hard work. So I've got here already softened, cut up 140 grams of butter. Lovely. Now, whatever you use of butter, just double the amount of icing sugar. This amount, this 140 grams of butter, should cover the sandwich bit of the cake. But now for the really messy bit, so we need now 280 grams of icing sugar. Icing sugar just goes absolutely everywhere. It's like been dusting for fingerprints or something. So I've stopped at about 200. So I don't want too much in for when I'm starting to actually get it going. I want a wet spoon. Now, if you go at this too much, you just get puffs of icing sugar in your face. About one of those Elizabethan characters. I find this bit actually harder than the making the cake. To keep the mixture gooey instead of just solid, one to two tablespoons of milk. Now, what I'd say is only put in the first tablespoon, see how you get on, because you might get away with just that one. You don't want to put two in and then find that it's too runny, and then you're trying to make up extra bits of icing sugar and butter, and it can just change the taste. Now, I use soya milk. I've never really noticed the difference. I always like to flavour my butter icing. So the recipe, you can put a few drops of food colouring in this. So I replace the food colouring, because I don't mind it being white, I'm happy with it being white. I replace the food colouring with a few drops of vanilla extract. I think the, the vanilla taste always goes really nice with So when you've got your extra in your extra icing sugar sorry in that would be the time when i put uh the first tablespoon of milk in it just really helps it come together again when you've done that add your couple of drops of vanilla extract instead of coloring combine it all together and just see just feel it see how it's going do you think it's spreadable do you think it's not and again, that's when you can put a little bit, only tiny, tiny amount of milk into it just to loosen it up again. Because don't forget your vanilla extract, that will start to loosen it up as well. So I'm perfectly happy with that. That's nice and spreadable. And that will taste lovely with the rest of the cake. So I'm going to leave this just sitting on the side, waiting for the cakes to cook. And then we'll come back when the cakes are ready. Okay, so the cakes are nearly done. There we go. Now, I was always heard that um, thing about cakes singing. Yeah, I know. Um, but if they're still making that kind of like bubbling noise, it still means there's too much moisture in it. But what I used to find was that then I'd end up taking them out far too late and they'd be dry and everything. So. I'd kind of go for something in between. So let's have a listen to them. It's 
So that's making a few, that's making a few sounds. But also what you can do, press it. And if it comes back up, then it's done, which it is. It's come away from the tin nicely as it's risen, thanks to that butter. That one sounds good as well. Okay, so what we'll do now for this, we'll leave it. We need it to cool in the tin. If you try and take it out of the tin, it can start to collapse or it will start to stick to the sides or it stick to the bottom because it's still too hot. So I'd really say invest in some of these little cooling tray things. They're really cheap and they're really, really good. They keep everything out of the way. The air gets underneath so things cool a lot easier. So again, while that's doing, have another cup of tea. Okay, so I've left the cakes to cool for quite a while, just so that I can touch them now. Now, I always think the easiest way to get these out is to use some kind of, I'm just using all well, this coffee thing. So, put it over it, and just let it do it itself to start with, and then just let it fall down. Bam, okay. Get that out of the way. This is all the tricky bit, you see. Okay. Now, the bottom will probably still be quite warm, so just be a bit careful with that, okay? Do the next one. That's it, and that one came off really easily. If you've greased it properly, it will come off. Right away. Now you've got to get them off, okay? So I'd go back to using some kind of spatula for this. Got one here. Now, as you can see, this one's a little bit lopsided and that's because I didn't put it in the oven flat enough. So that's my own stupid fault. So let's get this off. Normally, if you just start it around the edge, it just lifts it up that little bit. And then when you're going to try and push it off, it will just come off all by itself then. There we go. Hopefully it will have a nice clean base, just like that. There we go. Just be careful because this bottom bit can be still quite hard. But at least now it will cool nice and quick. And we've got the cake off. Smells lovely. Okay. What I'd be doing as well, have a quick look at which one you think is the best one because you can leave the dome on the best one and have that as your top. Um, so I think top wise, I'm going to go with this one because it's level. So what I'll do, I'll cut the top of this one off um, to make it flat. Just cutting the top off to make it flat, just so that when you come to putting it together, it's just actually got something to sit on level then. I mean, I know it sounds really simple. I would never chuck any of this away. You can always have a little munch on it. And it's always really nice to taste it. Mmm. Quite tastes lovely. Definitely not. All right, so again, I'm just going to leave it 10 15 minutes. Make sure that it's nice and cool because you don't want to start putting your butter icing on and your jam if it's still warm because it'll just start to run and it'll just make a complete mess. Okay, back in a bit. 
Okay, so it's time to put everything together now. So I've got a spatula type thing. Just work the butter icing, buttercream, just to make it a bit fluffier, which also makes it a little bit easier to spread. Sometimes this can be a bit awkward to spread. So first of all, I'm going to put the butter icing on and then the jam. Okay, and then with the jam, when you've got it, take a dollop of the jam, because it can be quite hard, really give it a good swizzle around, really breaks it up, makes it nice and runny, pour it on, don't go too close to the edge because it might start dribbling down the side and nobody wants a dribbling cake, do they? <laughs> I've got um, some leftover butter icing cream stuff, so I place that on top. Make sure you've really whisked it together because it can be a little bit difficult trying to drag it over and you can rip bits of the cake off. And then just to finish it off, some nice sprinkles. So that's it. Easy, simple, simple sponge cake that I can't even say. Um, I hope you try it. Any ideas on additions to the recipe, please let me know. Put comments at the bottom of the video. Share it with your friends. I hope it tastes nice. I know that does because I've tried it and I'll see you again soon.